In this tutorial, we're going to go through five more JavaScript practice exercises, all focusing on arrays that have slightly more complex data inside them. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be completing some more practice exercises, all focused around JavaScript arrays. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates, and you can find a link to the gist that contains the exercises in the lesson in the description below. So in this lesson we've got another array that we're going to be doing our exercises with, and as you can see it's got slightly more complex data inside it. There are quite a few properties and some of them contain arrays themselves and some of them contain arrays of objects as well. So the exercises themselves are fairly straightforward and you'll see that working with more complex data isn't necessarily harder, it's just a matter of breaking down the problem and using the appropriate JavaScript array methods to come up with a solution. So feel free to watch the video and see the sample solutions that I came up with, or if you want to go ahead and have a go at the exercises and come back if you get stuck, or share your solutions if you get something different than I did. So let's first of all copy the array to our clipboard and paste it into our developer tools. And now you can see we've got our accounts array defined with five items inside it. So let's make a start with exercise one. So exercise one is asking us to look at the first item in the array, the first account that we have, and get a list of all the tags for this account as a one dimensional array. So what that means, if we actually examine the first item in the array, is that you'll see that the tags property actually has nine items in the array that contain additional tags for this particular account. So what we're after is an array of all the tags without any nesting inside them. In other words, we want these items here in the last two positions in the array to be put into the same level as the other items in the array here. So there are definitely a few different ways that you can do this. You might be thinking about using the spread operator and a map function which is definitely a good option, or if you're a bit more old school, you might use the concat and apply functions on an empty array, so you might have something like this. And that, as you can see, works quite well by taking each item in the array and using the concat function to kind of merge it all into one single array. But there's actually a fairly recent JavaScript array method that's been introduced, which is the flat method. So as you can see, it does exactly the same thing, and it has the added benefit as well that if there were arrays inside of the arrays that are contained within the tags property, then we can also flatten those out into one array by specifying a level of depth. So for example, specifying a level of two would go two levels deep into the original array and flatten those values out into our returned flattened array. So this is just a case of choosing the right method to do the job. Although if you're going to be using this in your projects, you should be aware that the flat function isn't really supported in Internet Explorer and possibly some other browsers too. But if you only really have a need to support modern browsers, then the flat function is definitely an option that you can use to do a task like this. So that's one possible solution for exercise one. If you did get something different, feel free to share it in the comments below. It'd be good to see some different examples. But let's move on now and have a look at exercise two. So exercise two is a little extension to exercise one. So it's basically asking us to find if the consecutor tag, or at least that string, is actually contained anywhere within the tags for the first account. So if you think about what we're trying to do here, we're trying to find out whether that string actually exists in the array of tags for the first account. So we could potentially use the find function to actually find that particular element in the array, but we don't actually really need to return it, we actually just need to check whether or not it exists in there. And for that, we can use the includes function. And you'll see by doing that that we actually get a false result, but if we actually examine the tags property again, You'll see the tag does actually exist in the bottom of the array, but as we saw in the first exercise, the two last items in the array are arrays themselves. So the includes function can't look inside those arrays, so we actually need to flatten out the array again, otherwise we'd need to do some kind of nested lookup if we encounter an array inside of the tags property. So again, that's quite a simple solution to the exercise, which at first when we're presented with those nested arrays might actually seem a bit trickier than it actually is. But luckily with the array methods in JavaScript, we can chain them together 
to modify an array on the fly to get the result that we're after. And there definitely are a lot of different solutions for this exercise, but as long as you're okay to use the flat function within your code, then this is a simple and elegant solution. So that's exercise two, let's have a look at exercise three. So exercise three is asking us to return a list or an array of all the tags for all of the accounts and join them together as a string separated by commas. So this might be a bit of a contrived exercise because you probably wouldn't normally want to do something like this. However, if you have an array of data and you're trying to display it to the user somehow, you might want to join that array together as a string to actually output it onto the page. So definitely for this exercise, the map function is going to be really useful for us because we're going to loop through all of the items in the array and just return the one property that we're after, the tags property, and then finally merge all of that together as one single string. So let's set up our map function. And I'm going to destructure the tags property out of each account, as we're not really interested in anything else in the individual objects. And that array of tags I'm going to join together with a comma. So you can see we end up with a new array that has five items inside it. And each item represents each account with a string value of their tags joined together with commas. But of course we're after one overall string so I'm going to join that again by just adding another call to the join function onto the end of that. And so this time we get one single string that's a list of tags from all of the accounts that have been joined together. So as I say, a bit of a strange one there, but it could have some use in your application if you're trying to display a list to the user in a different way. And you could achieve the same effect using potentially a for each loop, but the map function won't actually modify the original array. So it's still a good solution if we're just trying to create a new string. So that's one solution for exercise three. Let's have a look at exercise four. So exercise four is basically asking us to get a complete list of all the friends for all the user's accounts. So if we have a look at one of the accounts, You'll see the friends property, which is an array that contains objects identifying the friends of the people of this account. So what we're really looking for in this exercise is to return a list of user names that have been extracted from each of the accounts. And one thing is we don't need to worry about any duplicates. So if there are any names that are exactly the same, we can just ignore those for now. So for this exercise, again, I'm going to use the map function. And the first thing I'll do is destructure the friends property from each of the accounts. And if I was literally just to return friends from here, you'll see I've got an array, but inside each array is the array of friends. And the first thing is we don't want to worry about the ID either as well. We just want to get the actual person's name. So let's first modify that in our callback. So now we've just got nested arrays that has the contents of the user's name. So now it's just a case of merging those arrays into one single array so that we've got a complete list of names in a one dimensional array. So again, we could spread the results of these into a new array, but I'm going to use the flat function again, just to merge all those nested arrays into a single array. So the other option would be to use the spread operator. But as you can see, you can't just return that from the map function. We'd need to tack on a reduce function potentially. You'd probably be best off using a reduce function to reduce it to one single array value. So that's why using the flat function is quite handy in this case. So that's one solution for exercise four. Let's have a look at exercise five. So exercise five is probably the most complicated out of all these and it's to get a list of all the friends for all users who are younger than 30 and have a balance of more than $1,500 in their account. So whenever we're looping through an array of objects and we're trying to find objects that meet a certain condition, the filter method is going to be the best option for us. So we're only really interested in two properties in each object, the balance and age of the account holder. And the age in each object is actually a number, so it's quite easy to do a comparison with that. And for the balance, you might think we'll do something like this. But you'll see in a second that that won't work for us very well. But assuming our condition is true, we want to just get the friends property from each of the objects that has been returned. And again, I'm going to call the flat function just to turn it into one overall array that's not nested. So as you can see, we don't get any results and we actually should do because there are some accounts inside the array that should meet these conditions. 
But if we have a look at the balance property in one of the accounts, you'll see it's actually a string that's got currency values and also delimiters like the comma. So we can use the parseInt function to parse a string into an integer. But you'll see that doesn't work very well on our particular string, and that's because of the dollar and the comma symbol inside it is causing the parseInt function in JavaScript to fail. So another thing we can do is to use a regular expression to remove those characters from the balance string. And the pattern is basically just saying match anything that's not a digit anywhere in the string with the global modifier, and with the replace function we can replace it with an empty string. So now you can see for the balance for the first account the value of $3,926 has just been converted into an integer value. So that means we can use it in our original expression. And check whether that value is bigger than 1500. So now you can see we've got a list of six accounts that have been returned from the function. And inside that are just the friends that were associated to those accounts for people under 30 that have a balance larger than 1500. Of course, we could do some additional mapping to get rid of the ID if we needed to as well. But if you're doing this in a real application, this might be useful to have some more information about each of those friends. And you might want to do some further processing once you've got those results. So that completes these JavaScript array method exercises. Hopefully you found a few tips and tricks that you can use when you're working with arrays in your application and your code. If you do come up with any different solutions, it'd be great to see those in the comments below. And just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.